Okay, take two. Welcome, welcome. It is Sweet Stamper here. Well, actually, it's Candy here from SweetStamper.com. Sweet Stamper is my online moniker. And I am so glad to be back with you here tonight, actually broadcasting from my home studio for the first time in almost a month. So I was broadcasting from the UK, and then I was broadcasting from my retreat site. So I am so happy to be back in my studio where I know things, where everything is. It's a lot easier for me to stamp with you from my studio. So I'm going to give it just a minute because this is actually take two. I messed up and um, accidentally got sideways. I was all set and ready to go, and then I dropped my phone. And I think when I dropped my phone, it's, it made my orientation go back to, um, back to sideways or vertical. Anyway, <laughs> I am so glad to be with you here tonight. We have, hey, Margaret, I'm glad you are here. Sylvia, welcome, welcome. We are going to be doing a quick and easy card using these adorable owls. I mean, it is celebration time. And so I haven't, you know, I was gone. So I didn't get a chance to really play with a lot of this stuff. And so I am scrambling to get caught up ever since I got home and uh, in the middle of jet lag and everything else. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm very grateful for the time that I had. And yeah, Susie. Yeah, when it goes sideways, it's really, it, I mean, you can't watch with your neck craned. <laughs> so, I'm going to grab one more thing, and we are going to make a quick and easy Valentine. Having said that, you can use my layout with other paper, and you can even use this, you know, the greeting is going to be my only Valentine part of this. So you could use any of these greetings. I'm going to pull this Happy Valentine's Day in from here. I guess I better get a block. Do I even have, yeah, I don't even have blocks over here. Okay. Okay, well, let's see how we get on. So what we're going to do is first things first. First, while we're just kind of gathering folks, folks are still coming. What I'm going to do is I have pre-cut a little circle from the stylish shapes. So this is a must have. I believe it's orderable right now. I don't know, we've got some things that are unorderable right now, but I think this is back in. Don't quote me on that. Um, If it's not in stock, it still needs to be on your wish list. So this is item number 159183. There are 15 all-purpose shapes in here. This is an absolute must-have. So I've gone ahead and pre-cut a little circle here just to save a little bit of time. And what I'm going to do, again, while people are gathering before I've even really properly introduced the video, I'm going to grab this little flying owl. So these owls are absolutely adorable. This is stamp set is free with a $50 product order right now. And it is a cling rubber stamp set, which means you get really incredible detailing with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp this little guy because I'm going to stamp him in memento ink. And although memento ink technically dries very quickly, I'm going to come behind here and I'm going to use some blends. And personally, I just really like to make sure that ink is totally, totally dry before I start adding my blends markers. Call me paranoid, but that's just kind of the way I roll on that. So he perfectly, just barely fits, but he does fit. We're going to come back and, st and color him in in a few minutes. So... Let me grab my chamois. Now, the chamois, if you are new to Stampin' Up! or you're new to my channel, um, the chamois is just kind of a foam piece, and you just wet it, and it actually comes damp. If it dries out completely, it will just become hard, but then you just rehydrate it in a sink of water. And this is phenomenal for cleaning your stamps. Honestly, it's, it's just... 
it's just water on here. So you can clean up your work surface, all kinds of things with it. I do find these stamp cases. You can get four of these. I think they're about eight fifty. And these are perfect for holding a chamois. And I'll tell you why they're perfect for holding a chamois. Because this is damp. If you put this in a Ziploc bag and you get no air in there, it will mold because it's wet. So you want to make sure you get just a little bit of air in there. And so this is not a, um, this is not a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This is not a perfect, um, it's not a no, hi, it's not an airtight seal. That's what I'm looking for. Not an airtight seal. So it gives you just a tiny bit of air in there, which means it will. Like if you haven't used this in a week or so, it'll start to dry out crisp around the edges. But it gives it just enough air so that it will not mold on you. Very important. Hey, Roz, I'm glad you are here. Susie is here. Welcome. Welcome. Jeanette, Pam, Margaret, Sylvia. Welcome, ladies. So I've been a good girl and I've actually cleaned my stamp. I'm kind of notorious for not cleaning up until I'm all done and then I've got like a disaster zone. Okay, then the other thing I was gonna do while I have that out is I wanted to talk to you about this suite. So this is the Country Bouquet Suite and it has this stamp set, it has this amazing punch and it has this gorgeous set of papers. Let's see if I have them all here. One, I was kind of whacking, chopping, getting ready. Um, great set of papers. So this is really, to me, love-themed, not overly Valentine-y. So we have one little, val this is my favorite piece of paper in the set. So we have one Happy Valentine's Day. The rest of this is just love-themed. I do love this heart because it's very flirty. And you could, not too difficult to fussy cut these hearts. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that. This is unorderable right now until the end of April, which is really painful. April the 17th before this little guy is available again. I'm sure it probably has something to do with the fact that it's Chinese New Year in China. I think this sold a lot more heavily than they anticipated. And um, am I even going? Am I in the right Lord have mercy. Am I even doing this right? I guess I'm in sweet stamper. <laughs> I hope I'm in the right spot. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, Facebook is messing with my mind right now. I, um, I started to say earlier, I actually host three pages because I have my personal page, Candy Rattray, and then I have my sweet stamper page, and then I am an admin on my Tower City Church, my husband's, well, our church. Um, he's the pastor. I'm an admin on that page. And now Facebook, oh, it, it just keeps switching me back. And I'm trying to get out of Tower City Church is where I was earlier today and try to get into Sweet Stamper. It just kept putting me back on candy. Anyway, I think I'm in the right place. Y'all are finding me. <laughs> Yay, Yolanda's here. Sherry is here. Thank you so much for sharing. I do, I, I'm behind on my um, drawings for prizes, but I um, I have prizes all set, ready to go. I just have to stop long enough to do the drawings. I do give away something every single, uh, for every single video that I produce. And uh, thank you, Jeanette, that I am on Sweet Stamper. Whew, it scared me. I looked down and thought, oh, I'm <laughs> in the wrong page. Um, so I do a giveaway with each one, and that's based on people who share my video. So if you share my video, you'll go into the drawing for that week's um, giveaway. So those are fun. Okay, back to, this is unavailable right now, but the rest of the suite is available. And I do think that you want this stamp set. There's a lot to love about this. So let me see if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think this is one, two, three. Yeah, this is all six of the designs. And you can see there's a lot of uh, balmy blue in here. And there's a lot of hearts, but they're really subtle. And so uh, thank you for sharing, Linda. So you see how these subtle hearts are here and these hearts, yes, you could go Valentine's with this, but you don't have to. And I so appreciate that. Maybe I'm missing a piece. Um, this one actually coordinates with the punch. And then I guess that's the same piece. I'm getting all mixed up here. 
this one has really subtle hearts and little, um, like little kisses and hugs on there, little knots and crosses. This page I think is really pretty. This is my favorite one right here with the bicycles. I love, love, love that. Then this nice stripe that you could use anytime. And then, oh, there's one more sheet over here. Let me grab my little stash here. This piece is really pretty too. And it has these very, I don't know, they're kind of flirty, artsy hearts. And, oh, no, it's that page. I don't know which page I'm missing. It seems like I'm missing one. Let's see if it's in here. No, maybe I've got them all out. Okay. Ah, this page here. I knew I was missing something. So this one is gorgeous. Love, love, love that piece. And then it has these little subtle hearts. Again, hearts facing each other. Really subtle. So this is available. The stamp set's available. The ribbon that goes with this is not available, so I'm bringing in some different ribbon. And uh, these are must-haves. These are the sequins. You get two sheets of this, and you get the gold, the pink, and the blue. And they're very iridescent, so they're a lot brighter than they look in the catalog. I like them a lot. Now, let me get into what I'm going to show you tonight, what we're going to do. So we're going to do this basic, basic design where I'm taking a regular card base. This is eight and a half by 11, and I've scored it and folded it at four and a quarter. And I'm gonna go with a portrait um, orientation. This is a piece of mint macaron, five and a quarter by four, super simple. Now, what I have is four pieces of different patterns of the designer paper, and these are three and three quarters by one and one eighth. So that's gonna give me just enough room, I'm gonna go here, to have a nice little frame around each piece. So you can do this with any set of designer series paper. I love the fact, you don't even have to have it all out of one set. You just need colors that coordinate with each other. Great way to use up your scraps. Again, this is one and one eighth by three and three quarters because this is a four inch by five and a quarter layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and put, and you can even like, you can do these a little, you know, cattywampus and do them a little bit casual. I tend to like these straight. Um, I can do so many things. Uh, I should say certain things I can do with that kind of um, off kilter look. But yeah, when it comes to something like this, I actually need mine to be straight. <laughs> or my eye just wants to keep fixing it. So there is my little, I wanted the, um, this is sweet sorbet. I wanted that on the end um, to give that higher contrast. And then I'm gonna go with this really soft. So I'm kind of alternating the sweet sorbet with the petal pink. And then here's another sweet sorbet one. And then one more that has a lot of the petal pink and these really pretty flowers. Perfect. See how that lines up? It's just one and one eighth by three and three quarters. That's a number you should write down or remember. <laughs> because again, you can do this with anything. And look at that cute pattern I have now. You can do this with any, any kinds of just scraps that you have. So now I'm probably just gonna lay, I'm probably gonna go ahead and stick this down. I could add some ribbon. So these are the choices that I have since the ribbon that goes with this is unorderable. I'm not gonna tempt you with it, as gorgeous as it is. So this petal pink ribbon is from our annual catalog. Very pretty, has a lot of nice texture. If I felt like I needed some, it does add a lot more petal pink. I also have this soft succulent, um, which coordinates really well with the, it's, it's a little bit deeper than the petal, uh, not petal pink, than the um, mint macaron. I could do that, that adds a lot of green. I'm not sure I'm even gonna go with a ribbon. So let's just kind of hold on to that. Let's hold that and think about it. Now, what I am gonna do is instead of just putting my little owl down here, 
I am going to do something, and that is I've cut a circle from this gorgeous fine shimmer paper. If you have not seen this, you are going to want to see this. So it comes like this, and you get two sheets each of 12 by 12, and it comes in three colors. So I believe this is mint macaron. It's working that way here. Look at that fresh freesia. Is that gorgeous or what? And then we also have just gold, and it's a soft gold. What I really like about this fine shimmer paper is although you get all the shimmer of glitter, there's no glitter. It's just smooth. So you don't have anything that's going to come off or that's going to maybe um, dull your blade of your trimmer or anything. So it's quite thick, but look how that gives just a little bit of shine, just a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of shine. Now, what have I done with my owl? Where did he go? See, this is what happens. Aha, uh -huh, he's underneath. I just thought that would kind of set my owl off. And because of that, I don't really think that I even need any ribbon. So I am going to, we're gonna color him a little bit. And I think we are also, where did I put it? I have a little strip, here it is. I wanted to put a little Valentine greeting, and I think I'm gonna use this little piece of sweet sorbet. Now I could, you know, if that's a little bit strong, I could go with the, um, let me grab a little piece of that. Let's just chop a little quarter inch, or this is a little half inch piece. So let's just chop a little half inch piece here. I think that might be better. What do y'all think? I think this is a little bit softer and it's gonna actually come out nicer with what I'm wanting to achieve here. Okay, so now we get to no sound. Is somebody getting no sound? Hello, hello, hopefully. I haven't heard anybody else say no sound yet. So hopefully y'all can hear me. Here we go. Let's go ahead and color our little I hope I didn't turn my sound off my thing. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let me know if anybody else is having, okay, so Roz says she can hear me, Laura can hear me. Okay, so maybe if somebody's having trouble with their sound, um, if you're on your phone or your computer, try turning it up a little bit and see what happens. Now, this is my color scheme, and I'm either gonna do I mean, owl, you know, this is a card. I can make my owl any color, like a cartoon. But I do want kind of a natural color owl. And so I can either go gray or crumb cake. So there is what this, this is um, gray granite, which is a warm gray. Or I could go with, this is the dark crumb cake. And I think, you see how warm these colors are? I think that I'm gonna go with the dark crumb cake and the light crumb cake. Now, you know, with our blends, these are great buy. You get a, a pair together, you get a light and a dark together. And on the, on the barrel, it's always gonna tell you whether you're on the bullet end or the brush tip. And I tend to use the bullet tip more than the brush tip. And they are a very tight fit. And that's because they are alcohol markers and you don't want them to dry out on you. So I'm going with the light crumb cake and I'm going to color the majority of his body and his little ears with this dark, no, this is light, sorry. I don't wanna lead you astray here. This is the light crumb cake. Cause I thought I would want, I. I just thought it would look kind of nice to have this part darker. And you can kind of play with whether you like the light on the inside or on the outside. It's really up to your own creative license. So, oh, thank you so much for telling me that you can hear me. You know, I really l rely on your feedback about things like that, as well as the designs. I like to hear your feedback about the way the designs are looking. Now, let's put 
a little bit. I'm going to do all the light colors first. I'm going to give him a little bit of blue around his irises. I love the artwork on this little guy. So pretty. And let's see. I'm going to do the dark. Let's give him going to make it be very dramatic here. We're going to make a darker face. I think that's going to give us some really nice bold contrast. And again, I just, this is just crumb cake, light and dark crumb cake. And that is going to give me a very, I'm kind of getting out of the lines there. Um, it gives me a very warm toned owl. I'm going to come back in here and give him a different color beak and different color feet. And again, I'm not trying to make him, he's a cartoon owl. I'm not trying to make him look exactly like a natural owl, of which there are numerous colors, you know, in the natural world. But he's obviously a little cartoon owl. I do think the expression with his eyes is absolutely adorable. Hello, Valerie. And hello, Gail. And hello, Marsha. I'm glad you ladies have joined us. So let's get his belly. I think he's looking pretty cute. Maybe a little bit dark. We might come in there and lift his uh, the color on his belly just a little bit. Let me get something for his beak. We just kind of pull them all out. This is petal pink, which is the color in here, and I think the dark petal pink might be just the right color for his little beak, although it's not very dark, but I think it's okay. And I was gonna get the color lifter. Let me grab my color lifter. Here we go. So the color lifter kind of bleaches out your color. I do like to use it kind of in circular motion. You see how it's lifting that color out of there, making it a little bit lighter. Keep it from getting too dark. Lift it just a little bit. And last but not least, I'm gonna take a little bit of this light pool party and I'm just going to, I hope this is light, yeah. I'm just gonna give a little bit on the outside don't want to color in the whole background, but I want to just give an illusion of him being in the sky. I didn't want to color the entire background, but I'm just outlining him in a little bit of pool party. He is stinking cute. You're right, Marsha. I think that whoever the artist is for this should, should have a medal, you know? I mean, you just, you just want to love them. Now, I could, you know, I could go and fill this in, but I think that by the time I put it there, I think a little bit of white is going to be kind of a welcome relief. So you can see why if I were to put like some ribbon here, I think it's almost too much. I could, it's a lot of green then. <laughs> now, if I come back in with my petal pink again, I think I just don't need it. Um, because then this is gonna go on white, although I kinda of like that piece. Um, so let's put him down, and then we're gonna do our greeting, and then we'll decide for sure whether we're going to do any ribbon or not, because you remember, this is gonna go on a piece of thick, basic white. So let's just do that, give him a little bit of shimmer behind him. I like that. I like it a lot. I do like his lighter, um, his lighter belly. I think that turned out well. Now, this is going to go on here, and I think I just am not going to do the ribbon. See how that white just kind of lifts all the white in here? Because we have a lot of color going on. So I think we're just going to leave it like that, because then we're going to come in here with our greeting. And I like things that are a little bit unexpected. Let me grab my stamp. So what I like about this little guy right here is I could come in here 
and I could stamp just wanted to say I could stamp I love we're friends for you I could stamp any of these Valentine's Day is right around the corner so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do happy Valentine's Day so you can see these are really well loved. You know, when you're um, when you're using photopolymer stamps, they will stain, particularly with the pinks, the dark pinks, the dark reds, the dark purples. But it doesn't hinder the way that they stamp. It's just the nature of the material. So I've just got this little strip here, and I am going to stamp that with where'd it go? A little bit of sweet sorbet and just pick up that soft red. Sweet Sorbet is really like a lighter counterpart to um, Poppy Parade. So it's an orangey red, but it's a softer red. Okay, and doesn't that just look like somebody hand wrote that? I love the fact that it has that look. So now I am going to clean this because I don't want to drop my white card base into that stamp and end up with red ink. Even soft red ink on a white card base, yeah, would definitely kind of mar things. So let's put this in here and then let's see how we're going to finalize this. I'm going to go ahead and stick down my background. And I'm just using my seal. This is my favorite of the um, Stampin' Up! Um, adhesives. Having said that, I use them all for various things. Sometimes you just have to have liquid glue. Sometimes you just have to have, um, well, those are the main, you know, the d dimensionals and things like that. You, you There's no you have to have dimensionals. <laughs> There's no other substitute for dimensionals. And um, so here we go. If we put him over here and put our happy Valentine's Day, maybe we should put it, see it's not gonna fit unless we put him way over here. Well, let's put him way over there and see how we get on. So let's pop some dimensionals on the back here. What have I got? Oh, I've got some minis here. Well. We'll just double them up. They're what's handy. You know, if you don't have many dimensionals, you know, once you are starting to really kind of get your craft stash built up, you'll want these. You don't use them terribly often, but when you need a little one, you're really glad you have a little one. And if they're all that's handy, you can just grab two, double them up, and there you have And then to get these little, to get the little backings off there, I like to use a pokey tool. Now, these are the, uh, this is the Stampin' Up! Um, take your pick tool, phenomenal tool. I will show you, my friend Pat makes these gorgeous ones. These are little handmade pick, take your pick tools, or just all they have is the pick. But they're really handy for this. They're also really handy for um, picking out little bits from your die cuts. So, yes, there we go. Kudos to Pat. So I think I'm just going to pop him right there. Oh, did I get ink there? Probably. Which means maybe, oh, I, think I, I think I got something there. I think I kind of, something bled over there. Trying to be so careful and not get ink where it didn't belong, and I think I ended up getting it there anyway. So let's just trim this pretty tight and see if I can place it in such a way. Actually, I think we're just going to maybe do this. I originally thought it would come out from there, but it's going to be a little bit too crowded, so we'll just pop it right there. Now, let me show you what I like to do with this. I'm going to put dimensionals under here, and I'm going to put seal right here because this is already raised and I want it to be even all the way across. And I don't know what that is. I, I, somehow there's a little smudge of ink, but you know what? I think I'm gonna put a, uh, a couple of rhinest not rhinestones, sequins there and we'll be good. So let me put a little bit of seal on that end. 
And then we are going to grab, and this is where you really like to have these guys because you see how narrow that strip is. And that is going to allow me to, this is just easier for me. See how you can just stack them on there. That is going to allow me to just go like so. Oh, I like him. You know, I usually, um, more times than not, I design on camera. That's just kind of the way I like to roll. And um, so I knew I wanted to do this, and I knew, I, but I hadn't actually put it together. So let's, now that we are all here, everything is ready to roll. Now, what should I do? By the way, of these little guys, what shall I do? I think these little pink ones are actually going to be the ticket. And I'm going to put one right there to try to cover up that little smudge. Because I didn't actually use much blue in here, and so I don't know that I want those blue ones. I think the gold might be a little bit too fancy. Uh, I don't, actually, I think I'm going to go with the gold. Because it's kind of picking up the brown tones here. These are a soft gold, so I don't think they're too fancy. And they kind of bring a little bit of a neutral color in, which is kind of kind of help because I got a lot of color going on here. But I don't think it's too much. And I just did my, you know, my banner. It just has straight ends. Nothing fancy. So super simple Valentine's Day. And what I like about this, it has some flowers here. But other than that, I mean, I would give this to my grandson. He would, well, he would think this was adorable. Uh, and I'm talking about my older grandson, who is, let me think, 11. He would think he was really sweet. My granddaughters, I could send this to anybody. And that's what I like. It's also, there's nothing, there's no hard embellishments here, so it will mail really easily. And I've got a little shimmer and shine going with the fine shimmer paper and then a couple of little gold sequins to give it a little bit of pizzazz. And other than that, it's just simple, it's cute, it's quick. The one thing I really want you to remember is these uh, designer series paper strips, they are one and one eighth by three and three quarters. You can do that with any set of papers you have. Now I put it on a five and a quarter by four layer, the standard layer that we use. And then you get a perfect border with all of those and it's a great way to use up those beautiful strips of paper that we all have lying around and um, and utilize them and I think that by incorporating the brown owl it really he really jumps out because we have a lot of color behind here so I wanted to keep him really neutral and a little bit plain um, I could do I dare put a reddish beak on him. I should leave well enough alone. So that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I will be here again next Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time. I will download this to YouTube as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. And uh, I will, now that I'm back in the saddle, almost caught up. I'm still kind of, still trying to get caught up. Um, I will be posting here a little bit more frequently once again. Um, for those of you who are unaware, I was in the UK for two weeks uh, welcoming my newest grandson. He was born while I was there, got to help uh, have, you know, hot meals for the household and all that good stuff and cuddle babies. And uh, he has, Declan is my newest grandbaby. And then he has a big sister named Fliss, Felicity, Fliss for short, Flissy. She's two. And then his big brother is Griffin and he is four. So they are a busy house. And I came in late Tuesday night, as in 11.30 p.m. late, and Creative Escape Retreat, we were setting up at 9 a.m. on Thursday, so I have, I'm still catching my breath, and uh, I think the jet lag is over. But it's been a whirlwind January and lots of excitement. So now it is time to get back to normal living. So thanks again for tuning in. Take care, and God bless.